Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve exponential equations now using your calculator. And the reason why we're going to be using our calculator is because we can't use the one-to-one -one property. If you remember, the one-to-one -one property said if a to the x equals a to the y, then x equals y. And the most formal our basic example I always went through was if you had something like this, 3 squared equals 3 to the x, then what does 3 or what does x equal? Well, then we could always say x equals 2. And the reason why that works is because whenever your bases are the same, your powers are equivalent. And what we did previously is, you know, we had something like 4 to the x equals, you know, 16. So therefore, what we did is we rewrote the equations with the same bases. Once we had the same bases, we could just set the powers equal to each other. Well, the problem with the pro with the problem. The problem with the problems I chose is that you cannot get the bases to be the same. If you look at this first example, I have 3 to the x equals 10. Well, if you look at the powers of 3, you have 3 to the first power is 3, 3 squared is 9, 3 cubed is 27. So I can't rewrite 10 as a base 3. And there's no other way that I could do it to, so that they have the same base. So therefore, I have to use my calculator. Now, there's a couple different mathematical ways that we're going to do this. And I'll show you, um, I'll kind of work through each and every one. The first way that I just prefer to do it is just by rewriting it into a logarithmic equation. If you remember, if I have b to the y equals x, I can rewrite that as log base b of x equal to y. So if I have an equation that's in exponential form, I can always rewrite it in logarithmic form. So by taking this equation and rewriting it in logarithmic form, I have log, oops, log base 3, remember the bases are always the same, of 10 equals x. Now, to plug this in my calculator, um, since I don't have this as a base 10, did I choose any of them that have base 10? No, I didn't. Hmm. So what I'll have to do then is use the change of base formula. So I'll do log of 10 over log of 3 equals x. So basically, what I'll simply do is just take my calculator. And you could use log or natural log. It doesn't really matter. I'll just do log of 10 divided by log of 3. And that gives me approximately 2.09. I'm just going to round this to the nearest uh, tenth. So that's going to be 2.1 is approximately x. I'll just write it the other way. x equals approximately 2.1. Okay. Now, when, doing, when rewriting them in exponential form, it is very important to make sure that we isolate this. It has to be exactly in this format. It can't be in any of these crazy formats. So a lot of times what we need to do is what we call isolate the exponent. So you can see our exponent here is 4 to the x. So to isolate it, I see that 2 is being multiplied. It. So in this problem, what I'm simply going to do is divide by 2 on both sides. So I have 4 to the x equals 10. Again, I can't simplify, I can't rewrite 4 and 10 with the same base because 4 to the first power is 4, 4 squared is uh, 16, 4 cubed is going to be, uh, 4 cubed would be 64. So therefore, again, I can just rewrite this in exponential form. And then and the other way to also do it is it doesn't matter if you're doing log, you can also do the natural log. And just try to do this. Try doing both of them and see and see that the answer is going to be exactly the same. Just make sure you, when you're typing this in your calculator, you do an ln of 10, close parenthesis, divided by ln of 4, and close parenthesis. And this gives me approximately 1.7 as I round it. OK? Now, that's the way that I prefer. There's also another mathematical rule that we could use which is, oh, I should probably do this. Uh, here's the change of base formula. Log of base b to the a is equal to log of a over log of b, um, which is equal to ln of a over ln of b. So it doesn't matter if you use log or natural log. Um, the other form that I wanted to show you is if you have log base b of a to the x, oops, base b of b raised to the x, that's just equal to x. And that's the way that a lot of textbooks uh, like to use, and, and I'll do that as well um, for this next example. So the next example, again, you can see my exponent is 6 to the x. I need to isolate my exponent, so therefore I could apply uh, rewrite in exponential form. So I'll subtract 10, and then I have 6 to the x equals 37. Now, a lot of textbooks, what they like to do is have you get rid of the exponent by using the rules of logarithms. If you have a log of base b of b raised to the x, then it just equals x. So therefore, what I can do is I can rewrite, I can take the log of both sides. 
So it's log. And I'm going to want to take the log of base 6 of 60x equals log base 6 of 37. Well, log base 6 of 6 to raise to the x is just equal to x, which is log base 6 of 37, which now I can um, solve using my one-to-one -one property or to change a base formula. I'm not going to write it in here. I'm just going to evaluate it divided by log of 6, which is two, approximately 2. Okay, um, so the next one just has, you know, again, some, some more, uh, more interesting uh, identities. Again, the main important thing is isolating the exponent. I always just like to convert. I don't really like using the rules of logarithms, or at least that rule of logarithms. That one, it's confusing for a lot of students. And it's just as simple just to reconvert it to logarithmic form. However, the main important thing, though, you, it, if you want to use the rules of logarithms or just convert it to exponential or logarithmic, you have to have your exponent isolated. So in this case, um, I need to treat this like a variable. I need to treat the exponent like a variable. So how would I solve 1 half x plus 2 equals 8? Well, to do that, I'm going to subtract the 2 on both sides. I have 1 half 4 to the x minus 5 equals 6. Then I divide by 1 half, which is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So now I have 4 to the x minus 5 is equal to 12. Now, I can rewrite this in exponential form. So therefore, it's going to be log base 4 of 12 equals x minus 5. Then I'll add 5, add 5. So x equals log base 4 of 12 plus 5. So therefore, now to approximate my answer, I'm just going to do uh, the log of 12, and parenthesis, divided by the log of 4, and parenthesis. And then I'm going to take that answer and add it 5 to it. And I have x equals approximately 6.8 as I round it. OK, so that's with numbers. And again, those are the easiest ones to understand. And you know, it's either you're using the one-to-one -one property or you're using your calculator. And the main important thing is you can actually, for all the ones even with the one-to-one -one property, you can still use your calculator for all of those. But typically, using the one-to-one -one property is going to be much faster and easier than having to go back and use your calculator. Now what we're going to be doing is going back into base e. Now remember base e, we're always going to be using our uh, natural logarithm. So even though the change of base form is you could have used a log or natural log, when we have base e, um, we're going to have to use the natural log to evaluate. So in this case, again, what you could do is take the natural log of both sides, because remember the natural log is base e. So that's e to the x minus 1 equals ln base e of 12. And that's why it's kind of helpful of converting it to exponential form. You know, that's why it's nice to think about it using this property. Because if you, when you have base e, the easiest thing to do is just take ln of both sides. Because now, I just have x minus 1 is equal to, I don't need to write base e, ln of 12. So therefore, I'll just add 1, add 1. x equals ln of 12 plus 1. So now, instead of using the change of base formula, which I had to for my logarithms, I can simply just do ln, because it is base e, of 12, and then add 1 to that result. And I get 3.5, or x is approximately 3.5 as I round to the nearest tenth. But just like in our other problems, we have to make sure we isolate um, our exponent. So here I have e to the 7x. Um, but it doesn't matter. That's still the power of my exponent. So the only thing I'm going to have to do here is divide by 9. So I have e to the 7x equals hmm, 2 ninths. Convert this to uh, take the ln on both sides. Don't need to write ln e. I just wanted to do that so you guys remember that it has a base e. So therefore, I have 7x equals ln of 2 ninths. Divide by 7. Divide by 7. So x equals ln of 2 ninths. Divide by 7. So now, in my calculator, I'm simply just going to do ln of 2 divided by 9, end parenthesis. And then I'm going to take that answer and divide it by 7, and I get negative 0.2, or approximately negative 0.2. OK, in the next one, again, we have a little bit more crazier uh, power. But again, it doesn't really matter. The main important thing is you just want that exponent to be isolated, right? Just isolate that exponent. So you subtract 1 on both sides, because that's not in the power. So I have e to the 3x minus 5 
equals negative 3. Now again, you, I did the ln on both sides, but again, ladies and gentlemen, you can convert this to exponential form if you wanted to. And even if you wanted to convert it to a uh, log, I mean, let's just do it. It'd be log base e of negative 3 equals 3x minus 5. Well, again, log base e is ln. So it's ln of negative 3 equals 3x minus 5 which if you just would have taken the ln of both sides, you would have got the exact same result. It just would have been that it would have been ln on both sides would have given you the exact same thing. So it's just different ways to getting to the product, to getting to the uh, answer. You could take the log or natural log on both sides, or you can just convert it to exponential form, however really you kind of feel comfortable with. Now we need to solve for x, so I'm going to add 5. So I have ln of negative 3 plus 5 equals 3x. Then I'll divide by 3. So my final is x equals ln of negative 3 plus 5 divided by 3. And that approximately is ln of negative 3 plus, oops. Ooh, can't do that. Ah, your result cannot equal a negative number. That is correct. Um, e to the x equals negative 3. Yes, you cannot have an ln equals negative 3. I totally forgot about that on this problem. Um, so remember, if you look at our graph of an exponential equation, graph of an exponential equation looks something like this, right? Well, if we're looking for a variable, you notice that none of the y values are going to be negative, right? So we can't take e to the x and have it equal. So when we isolate it, I'm sorry, I forgot about this. When we isolate it, e to the negative x, we can't have it equal to a negative power. So therefore, in this case, um, there is no solution. So whenever an exponent, uh, exponential equation is equal, is equal to a negative number, therefore we know that there's no, there's no value x that can, there's no value x, all these x values, whenever we plug them into equation, are always going to give us positive answers. So for instance, if I had like 2 to the x equals negative 4, there's no number you can raise 2 to to give you a negative 4. There's no solution, right? There's no number you can take 2, raise it to a power, and give you negative 4. The most common response I get from students, is 2 to the negative second equals negative 4. Well, that's not correct because 2 to the negative second is 1 fourth, which does not equal negative 4. Okay? So I kind of went along. I wanted to, well, I was thinking to show you, you do the exact same thing, you can convert it. However, this is an example of when you get it to there, you immediately can just say, no solution. I kind of forgot I put this problem in there. So which brings us to our next lovely problem, which is in a odd form, nothing like we have seen before. Um, and again, we are trying to, oh wait, I didn't write that one that was equal to. That's equal to zero, my apologies. It's an equation, not an expression. Okay, so the first thing I kind of notice is this kind of looks like a trinomial, right? And actually, well, it is a trinomial, it has three terms. But, um, but it kind of looks like a quadratic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace I'm going to try to rewrite this in terms of my quadratic equations. And what I'll do is I'll write this as x squared minus 4x minus 5. So what I'm basically saying is x is equal to e to the x. Okay, this is what we call and kind of call our substitution method. Now, if I was going to do this in this case, I would basically say, um, do you see how if I replace x with um, e to the x, I get that? Now, remember the power rule. Um, uh, works in here to give you e to that 2x, because remember you're adding them. Okay, so, but if I wanted to solve this, I would have to factor and use the zero product property. Well, by factoring this out, I get x minus 4 times x plus 1, no, nope, x minus 5, equals 0. Then what I could do is use the zero product property, and I'd say x minus 5 equals 0 and x plus 1 equals 0. OK, well, I factored and used quadratic, and that's what I like to do. But now I need to kind of rewrite and plug everything back in. If I'm saying x is equal to e to the x, then basically what I'm saying is e to the x minus 5 times e to the x plus 1 
equals 0. Now, let's go back and double check to make sure this works. What's e to the x times e to the x? e to the x times e to the x is equal to e to the x plus x, right? Because when you multiply um, exponents, you add the powers, which is equal to e to the 2x. OK, so that's how I got that. Negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. And then negative 5 times e to the x is negative 5x. And 1 times e to the x is 1 e to the x. Well, negative 5 e to the x plus 1 e to the x is going to equal negative 4 e to the x. Perfect. OK, so good. So now by using my 0 product property, I can say e to the x minus 5 equals 0 and e to the x plus 1 equals 0. Well, when I solve, I get e to the x equals negative 1. And we know that an exponential, which I explained over here, cannot equal a negative number. So that's not going to produce an equation. So I just have 5. So I have e to the x equals 5. Then, taking the ln of both sides, I can say the ln of 5 is equal to x. So now, all I need to do is go back to my calculator and just type in ln of 5, and that equals 1.6. So x is approximately 1.6. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve exponential equations by using your calculator. Thanks.